G'day there, Ray Cochran here. So in this week's video, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Um, we did recently a video on rent vesting. And uh, in this week's video, I really wanted to talk about, I guess, my personal situation, uh, both me and my wife and, and my son, and uh, basically what we're planning to do. We live in Sydney, and uh, as many people know, uh, property prices worldwide have been going crazy. Australia has been no exception. And uh, in Sydney, it's been ridiculous. You know, we went to, me and my wife went to an auction just nearby, near our place, um, out of curiosity, and it had a $1.8 million price guide, and we're like, oh yeah, we'll have a look. And there was a number of uh, young families there, you know, excited and uh, probably naive, uh, thinking that they were gonna buy the place. And uh, they just got blown out of the water, and the property that was listed for, you know, price guide 1.8 sold for 2.5. The scary thing about that is that there was like three or four other bidders that were still bidding at like $2.3 million range. So you can kind of imagine that the next few auctions would have had people, you know, that were willing to pay 2.3 ish million dollars for other properties listed for the same price. So, you know, it was just ridiculously competitive and, um, and not even good value, just terrible value. The property was was very average, um, about 600 square meters and needed a renovation, it was very old style. So, you know, to pay $2.51 million uh, for a property that needed still probably a few hundred thousand to make it quite nice um, was just crazy. So after sort of experiencing this a bunch of times, uh, we had saved uh, our deposit for a family home. And, you know, that was the thing that, you know, everybody does. So we'd saved our deposit and, um, you know, everybody, you know, you have the Australian dream, you know, you save up you work in a job and you save up your money and then you typically buy a house that's you know humble uh, maybe out in the burbs and you start off there and then hopefully if you're lucky enough you'll make a bit more money and uh, you'll move to somewhere a little bit nicer after a few years and potentially repeat the process a few times and everybody always talks about you know you've got to have a backyard for the kids uh, I can't tell you how many times I've heard that um, you know having your own place being able to hang a picture and uh, you know, paint the walls or whatever. And um, this is a thing that everybody loves. And um, you know, we were on that path as well. And the a funny thing happened once we started to, once we actually had the deposit saved and we started looking at houses. And um, to be honest, I got pretty uh, deflated because I was just looking at the houses within our budget. And I think we have a pretty good budget. Um, and the houses were still crap. Our options were either spend a lot, regardless, spend a lot of money, but get a house that's crap, that's sort of close to, um, you know, the not too far from the CBD in a decent area, and probably have to spend a few hundred thousand on renovating, or uh, spend less but live really far out away from basically everybody and anything I know. And sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. So it's not like it would have been terrible living out that way, um, but for us, like there's no lifestyle, our friends and family aren't anywhere near there. Um, and work-wise, my, my wife would have to do a huge commute to work. Sometimes you have to compromise, um, but for me, I just felt like we were spending a, a lot of money on something that wasn't that good. I didn't, I didn't feel very excited about that plan. I had a conversation with my wife about it because I thought that she wanted you know, vent the house as well. We'd kind of thought that we both wanted that. And a funny thing happened is, you know, when we started to actually talk about it, we both actually realized that we agreed that we didn't really want to do that path. And the problem with renovating a, a place as well, you know, you're, you've got to pay for, um, so you've got to pay heaps for the house, even if it's crap. Second is you've got to pay for the renovation. You've got to take time finding the different trades. You've got to manage those trades. Even if someone else is doing it for you, it's not hands off. You've got to go through the process of picking every little finish and stuff. And if you don't really get hands on there, it's probably gonna look crap. You've got to pay for rent the whole time this is being done. There's a lumber shortage, um, I think worldwide at the moment. Uh, so certain things take uh, way longer to do. A lot of tradespeople are quoting a lot higher because they've just got, you know, there's, there's so many people wanting to renovate at the moment due to uh, rising house prices. And it was basically like a whole bunch of crap things. And like for, for me, I'm quite busy with uh, my running my business and my wife's quite busy as well. And we've got a, a young son. So there's a lot going on and, uh, you know, a house renovation and house hunting as well are both very time consuming things. And the more I looked into it, the more I was like, I just don't want to do this. I was like, for what? The benefit was, oh, you have a little bit more space and you can hang a picture and paint a wall uh, and have a backyard for your kid. For me, I just thought like, I, I don't care about any of that. Um, the more we broke it down, and the reason I'm telling you this is maybe that uh, if you're looking for a property in an expensive city or you're just looking for a property and maybe being priced out of the market, um, you might want to check out my rent vesting video where I kind of break it down. But in this video, I just wanted to share, I guess, my personal um, uh, situation and thought process because it might give you some ideas. 
But, you know, in terms of having a backyard, yes, that would be nice, but I don't really care about having a backyard, you know. Um, my son's gonna be in daycare Monday to Friday. He's not gonna go to um, be in the backyard much Monday to Friday, most likely, or minimal. And then on the weekend, we're probably gonna be out anyway. So he'll be, you know, out and about at the park or whatever. Next thing is be able to hang a picture. Who cares? Paint the walls, I don't care. Um, of course, my wife would probably love to renovate a place at some point, but the huge cost and pain in the ass for doing all this uh, was not worth it. You know, we kind of uh, weighed everything up and I was just like, uh, yeah, I don't want to renovate a house that bad, basically. And if that's something that you want and you really, really like, then, you know, I think you should go for it. But for us, we just realized that, you know, something that a lot of people like uh, may not be right for us. And, uh, you know, we just didn't, we don't care. And, uh, you know, some people, they really want a house and they feel claustrophobic in an apartment. For me, I've never grown up, I, like my family home was small uh, and I don't really care about living in an apartment. You know, it's, it's more than enough space for me. And another cost as well is just like the mental headspace of, you know, trying to figure out what you're gonna do and house prices is getting more and more ridiculous and it's just terrible value. And if you're in an area where house prices are quite affordable, this might be a different conversation. But if you're in a big major city um, where house prices are crazy then, or house prices are growing rapidly, um, you know, buying a house uh, may be a terrible decision. And I think, you know, for me with my finances, I, I you know, I've always tried to approach it uh, relatively flexibly. So I'm never like, I'm 100% doing this or 100% doing that. You know, sometimes you just gotta be open to doing things differently. You know, I, in my head, expected to get a family home and do it that traditional way. Things are crazy right now and I just don't think it's good value. And I think I'll actually be better off financially after doing some rough calculations um, by paying as little as possible for rent and taking all that money, spending hopefully none of it or very little of it, and then dumping as much as possible into regional investment properties uh, and stuff like ETFs. And I, I think that's gonna be a much, much better path. So in terms of like how we've approached it, um, so I, I've always uh, rented and we bought a property, uh, our first investment property a few years ago um, in, a, in regional Victoria in Australia. And uh, we've since bought other properties and we plan to plan on basically uh, taking the deposit that we had for the family home and then buying multiple smaller investment properties. And you know, the thing I like about that is I'm not gonna have so much money tied up in the one asset. I've never been too super keen on having, you know, such a large amount in one property that doesn't cash flow. And uh, I'm just genuinely more, I mean, my wife is as well. I think we're more excited about the idea of having five properties or 10 properties or whatever it ends up being. Um, that all cash flow every single month. And it's not without its uh, problems, you know, there's dealing with property managers, tenants, repairs, reporting, you know, tax stuff, it just gets confusing. But for me, you know, I, I like that idea a lot more and I can retire on, you know, the cash flow. Whereas, you know, if I owned a house, I could have a bajillion dollar house, but it doesn't cash flow anything for me. And for, I just, I kind of, I'm erring more towards that approach at the moment. And, uh, you know, hopefully by the end of the year we'll have uh, four properties. So, and then I'm planning to buy basically as many as the bank will let me um, between now and the next probably 18 months. So we'll see how we go. I don't know how, uh, you know, in terms of serviceability, I think it should be okay, but uh, I'm self-employed. So the banks are always a bit funny with that stuff. And I feel like they're a little bit harsher on self-employed people versus uh, people in a job, even if they earn less. Um, but yeah, so that's basically our plan. This is sort of what we're, we're looking at doing. Um, we used a buyer's agent for the first couple of properties um, and we're currently about to buy our third at the moment, which, our, uh, which is also with the buyer's agent, but ongoing, we're planning to buy. Um, I've learned a lot since buying that first property um, and I've still got a lot more to learn, but basically the plan is to start you know buying these myself and being a bit more involved in that process so uh, I'm, I'm actually genuinely excited about it so it should be uh quite good and if you have any tips on uh, great investment property areas in uh, australia please let me know but yeah i just thought i'd just kind of share um sort of what we're doing um nobody's asked me to do this but just more so you know maybe it might give you some ideas or if you've been sort of feeling i guess um not pressured but you know you feel like everyone kind of expects you to buy a home uh, maybe challenge that, you know, if you run the numbers and it's actually better financially for you to rent cheap and buy uh, elsewhere, then, then maybe that's what you should do. You know, where I live, there's huge amounts of apartments. As a result, the rents are quite low, even if the house, the apartment cost is high. So we can live in a nice, decent place uh, for not that much. My favorite part is I don't have to deal with maintenance or BS. I just pay them the money and I can go about my life and grow my business and work on projects. So. 
Uh, for me, I like the simplicity and uh, you know the flexibility of that. And uh, you know, for you, it might be a good option as well. Like, not buying a family home may be a great option for you. Uh, but it might also be a terrible option. So, you know, run the numbers, you know, speak with your partner if you have one um, and just work out what's best for your lifestyle. For some people, it's just not gonna work and other people, it's gonna be a great option. So, hope you found that useful. If you have any thoughts, please let me know. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.